go ahead and start seated this time. You can sit on a block, you can sit on your heels, or you can sit in Sukhasana, easy seated pose, crisscross applesauce. Take your time to get there if you're not there already. Let the eyes close. And notice the breath that greets you there. If you felt rushed this morning, maybe slowing the breath down. Let that slow the mind down as well. Perhaps even finding your pulse somewhere on your body. Feeling if it's fast. And as you continue these slow, deep breaths, Notice the pulse begin to slow as well. The breath and the mind slowing the body down. Letting the foundation of your practice today be compassion. You know, we can Practice the most advanced asana postures, but if they're not done with ease, compassion in mind, they're not gonna have the same transformative effect that they could. So as you breathe in, allow compassion to come to you, to your body, to your practice. And as you exhale, send it out into this weary world that we're living in. Compassion in and compassion out. Noticing any imagery that comes to mind. Any emotions. And turning the internal eye from those things towards your practice. Thinking about how you're going to move today, how you're going to breathe. Begin to plan, or at least make an intention, about how you can be more compassionate, more intentional in those actions. If you fall out of a pose, allow yourself to smile about it, and then just meet us back where we are. Yoga is this asana. It's asking a reasonable challenge of yourself. So if what we're doing feels unreasonable for you today, don't do it. Show yourself that compassion. With the eyes still closed, with yourself still seated, begin to invite in movement into the body. You might notice that your spine begins to twist a little from one side to the other. Maybe it's the neck. The ear begins to tip towards one shoulder and then the other ear towards the other shoulder. Maybe a combination of all of it. With your eyes still closed, imagine your body parts as a checklist. You're trying to make sure every part of the body gets checked off that list for movement. So it might get a little weird, but don't worry, no one else can see you. Begin moving through the limbs, through the toes. Begin moving through the legs. You might need to come to table. You might need to kneel. Whatever that is, allow the legs to move as well creating movement in every joint of the body, sensation in every body part. Imagine that they light up. And we still have that slow, compassionate breath, so welcome that in. Compassion in for yourself. Compassion out for the world around you. Letting this be the foundation of your practice today. Lying all the way down on your belly. Reaching the hands back by the hips. Tucking the chin so the forehead comes down. Interlacing the fingers behind the back if you're able to do so. Otherwise, actively reaching the palms towards each other. And then begin tucking the shoulder blades towards each other and down the spine. 
Shoulder heads are away from the ground. And now begin to lift the forehead away from the floor, keeping the chin tucked. Imagine you're pulling your knuckles if your fingers are intertwined towards your feet, shoulders away from the ears. Lift the belly button away from the floor. Now begin to activate the back of the body. Feel the chest lift a little higher away from the floor. Spinal and rectal muscles are working hard here. Chest is beginning to guide forward instead of just up, levitating away from the floor. And then let that activation of the back body work down. So now the glutes begin to engage. Squeeze your glutes, squeeze your thighs towards each other. Bend at the knees and lift the soles of the feet up towards the sky, activating the hamstrings. Now point the toes and reach into the back of the mat, quadriceps activated. Bend and lift towards the sky with the feet, hamstrings. Point the toes and reach. Now while you're reaching, now also use the hamstrings and lift the heels up towards the sky with legs straight, toes pointed. Now reach the palms down towards the floor, up towards the sky, Rotating through the hands. Now, palms down. Lift the heart more, pinkies towards each other. Shalambhasana, locust pose. Feel heat radiating through the entire body. Stretch through the neck as the crown goes towards the top of the mat. Back body is strong. Lower all the way down. Elbows under shoulders, sphinx pose. We worked the back of the body just a bit to wake everything up. Now let's begin to find a little bit of stretch. Opening the front of the body, bending through the back of the body. Go ahead and cant in your right hand diagonally. So the forearm is diagonal, the right hand is sort of in the center of the mat. That way you can bend through the left leg, reach back with the left hand. Quadricep stretch. If you'd like more here of the back bend, you can begin straightening through that right arm. Get more of a back bend, maybe adjust your grip, get even more of a quadricep stretch. Notice how you engage with the breath. Perhaps how you even engage with your thoughts. Again, welcoming all compassion. Lowering down and then switching sides. So we start in our sphinx. We let that left hand come across the mat, bend through the right leg, reach back with the right hand. Stretching right quadricep. Option to go a little bit deeper, straightening through the left arm this time. Keeping the chest towards the front of your mat. Neck relaxed. Perhaps today you don't even want to focus on the breath. That's okay. Focus on ease of movement. Let that be your gauge. Noticing if everything that you're asking of yourself feels reasonable. Softly lower the foot, come back to sphinx. Tuck the toes, lift the kneecaps away from the floor, firm the quadriceps. Hold the belly button away from the floor with your abdominal muscles. Lift the pelvis, forearm plank. Pausing here, creating heat now in the front of the body. Leaning towards the right side, planting the left hand. Leaning towards the left side, planting the right hand, full plank. Let's create more heat in the front of the body. First, step the toes back a bit. We did this yesterday, if you were there. We're gonna step the hands forward, one full handprint. We're going into some long planks here, get ready. Right hand forward, left hand forward. Right hand forward, left hand forward. If you need to hold on to the end of your mat, you can. I'm on carpet, so it's a little slippery. What we're doing here is we're pushing. We're trying to stretch and tear the mat apart, 
but we're also trying to core set into our very center. Squeeze the thighs together, wrap the underarms towards each other, feel your core work. Hands come back under shoulders, feel the strength. Walk the hands all the way back, forward fold at the back of your mat. Feel free to sway the hips from side to side. You can also do this in a half lift position with a nice straight spine. Just bend the knees and press hands to shins and shins to hands. You can still sway a bit here. Or you can melt completely into ragdoll, yogi's choice. It's raining here right now, so maybe invite in water-like movement. Not falling from the sky-like movement, but maybe more of a, a flowy water movement. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Lift the chest forward away from the thighs. Again, lift the low belly up and in. Lift the tailbone. Tuck the chin length in the back of the neck. And now look forward. Bend the knees as, you, as if you're going to squat towards the heels. Reach the arms forward. And you're going to lean forward onto the toes as much as you can. Pause there and then walk the hands forward. Good. Stretching the feet now. Really rocking through the toes. Instead of rolling over the toes like we do, keep them tucked and just lean forward and stretch the bottoms of the toes. Back and forth. Now begin to walk the feet forward towards the hands at the top of the mat. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale. Ardha Uttanasana, half lift. Now bend the knees, sink the hips, Uttanasana, chair pose. Engage your glutes, squeezing the outer glutes in. Pull the shins apart from one another isometrically. Hug the low belly in, lift the heart up, broaden the collarbones. Push down through the feet, stand all the way up, arms will reach, Urdhva Hastasana. Fold all the way forward. Inhale, half lift. Plant the hands, right foot back. Knee comes down, arms reach up, inhale. Exhale, plant the hands. Tuck the back toe, lift the knee, left foot back, down dog. Inhale, right leg lifts. Bend the knee, open the hip. Wrap that hip back under, straighten through the leg, inhale. Exhale, step it forward as much as you can. And then help it get there the rest of the way with your right hand if you need. Left knee down, inhale, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, plant the hands. Look forward, step forward, inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. In this half lift, begin to bend the knees more, sink the hips, chair pose. Breathe in here. Compassion to the body. Where there's struggle, there's growth. Fold forward. Inhale, lift the chest. Plant the hands, left foot back, left knee down, arms reach high, Anjaneyasana. Remember, Anjane, mother of Hanuman, full of devotion, of faith. Perhaps while you're here for a little moment longer than the other side, thinking about where in your life you could use a little more faith. Plant the hands down. Tuck the toe, lift the knee, right foot back this time. Hips lift up. Down dog. Adho Mugleshwa Asana. Left leg lifts. Bend the knee. Open the hip. Close the hip. Straighten the leg. Inhale. Exhale. Begin to tuck the knee round the back and then step the foot forward. Right knee down. Anjane Asana. Maybe this time leaning a little bit more into the pelvis, reaching a little higher through the hands. 
Plant the hands, look forward, step forward, inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Sink the hips, Utkatasana, chair pose. Press through the feet, rise all the way up. Back bend or chest opener, yogi's choice. You can also do both. Let whatever you do feel good and reasonable in your body. Feel stable. Neutralize the spine. Inhale, reach high, gaze high. Slowly fold forward. Inhale, half lift. Plant the hands, step the right foot back. Option to drop the knee down or keep it high this time. Sweeping the arms up as you press down into the feet. Warming up the body. Hands plant, left foot back. Option this time to go straight to downward facing dog or to rock forward and move through your vinyasa. Either halfway, chaturanga or all the way to the floor. On your inhale, pressing into the hands, lifting the heart forward. Pull your shoulder blades together and down your spine. Collarbones are wide. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, down dog. Right leg lifts. This time, don't bend the knee, but open the hip. Point through the toe, pull back through the heel. Wrap that right hip crease back under. Lengthen again, maybe lift the heel up. Maybe now bend the knee with the hip squared. And then push through the, through the ceiling again with the foot. Straighten the leg, inhale. Step it all the way forward. Same option as before, you can drop that knee down or keep it lifted. Rising up. Settle in a little bit deeper. From here, we're gonna step the left foot forward. So you might need to put a little more weight into the right foot. As you're ready, we're gonna step forward into chair pose. So maybe hands to heart, a little lean forward of the chest, chair pose. Great job. Fold forward. Whew. Shake it out if you need to. Inhale, half lift. Plant the hands, left foot back. Rise up. Breathe here. Pull the low belly in. If you need to get a little deeper down to that knee, lift the front heel, lower, and then release the heel back down. Maybe open the chest this time. Feeling strength in the legs. Reaching up to inhale, planting the hands. Right foot back, vinyasa option, or straight to downward facing dog. Every vinyasa is an option. On your inhale, lift the left leg. Keeping the left leg straight, open and stack the hips. Feel a stretch through the left side of the body near the hip maybe, maybe up through the arm. Wrap the left hip back under, and then lift the heel up towards the sky. Bend at the knee, and then push through the sole of the foot. Straighten the leg, inhale, exhale, step it forward. Push down through the feet, be strong through the legs, light through the torso, you just float. Perhaps here, a little chest opener or a back bend. Inhale, arms reach. Maybe now they come to heart as you lean forward and step into your chair pose, Ukatasana. And fold forward. Pedal out through the feet, sway through the hips. Inhale, half lift. Plant the hands, right foot back. Rise up, high crescent lunge. Hands to heart, 
Now, keeping hands to heart, push the palms toward each other, push down through the feet, and try and stretch your feet apart from one another. Pull the low belly in. And as you pull the low belly in, begin rotating the upper body towards the left. Feel strong in your core. If you'd like here, you can extend your arms. If you'd like, you can revolve reverse. Get more of a side body opening, more of a back bend, but maybe not. Stay where you feel good. Back to center, plant the hands, left foot back, vinyasa option, or straight to down dog. Eyes forward, feet forward any way you like. Tiptoes, steps, or hops. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Planting the hand, stepping the left foot back this time. Pushing down heavy through the feet. Floating gracefully up with the arms. Hands to heart. Lift the elbows, push into the palm so you're making a straight line through the forearms. Pull the belly in, squeeze, contract. Twist towards the right. If you need to remind yourself, let the pelvis come down towards the floor, bend through the right knee a little more. Push through the back heel. Perhaps straighten the arms. Maybe revolve reverse. The options are yours. Coming back to center, planting the hands, right foot back, vinyasa option, down dog or child's pose. We're gonna be here for five breaths. Option to stay where you are and down dog. To drop down to the knees, find child's pose or hero's pose, or to invert. Shirshasana, Kinchamayarasana, handstand, whatever sounds good to you. Reconnect with your compassionate breath no matter where you are. Inhaling compassion for yourself, filling up your cup. Exhaling compassion for others, pouring that out. Slow breaths. Slow the body, slow the mind. Notice what you hear. Can you hear the rain? It's raining. Can you hear music? welcoming whatever is happening in your present situation into your practice. Meeting in plank pose. Nice and strong. Thing to rock the right heels, or the heels towards the right, keeping the hands where they are. And back up. So we're on our tippy toes. Heels drop towards the left. Feel the squeeze in the abdomen. Back up, drop the heels towards the right. Back up and towards the left. This time, if you'd like to find a side plank, Vashi stops as we rock the heels towards the right, you can. We're not here for long, so don't go crazy. Left hand down, right hand lifts. Vashi stops on the other side. Right hand down, hips lift all the way up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lifts. Come up onto the left toes, and now rock onto the left side of the foot. Rock the shoulder over the left wrist, and now we're in a Bashi Sasana with the leg lifted. Maybe you bend through the right knee and reach back with the right hand. Push into the hand, push the foot into the hand, hand into the foot. Push the floor away from you forward. 
release, star like shape, three leg dog. If it would feel good here, you can open the hip or you can even close the hip on an inverted uh, rotation of the knee and allow that right knee to come under the body towards the left. Internal rotation through that hip. Set the right foot down. Left leg lifts. Really reach the heel up towards the sky. Get a good stretch first. Lift up the right heel coming onto the right toes. Rock onto the right side of the foot. You begin to bring the right shoulder towards the right wrist. Left arm floats, shoulders and hips are stacked. That left leg is lifted. Perhaps you've been through the left knee this time. Reach back with the left hand. Remember compassion if you have a difficult side. Let yourself smile. Releasing when you're ready. Hand down, leg up, three leg dog. Option two, open, externally rotate the hip or internally rotate the hip and let the left knee come under towards the right side of the body. Right foot down, downward facing dog. Eyes forward, feet forward any way you like. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Heel toe the feet wide. Malasana, sink the hips down, hands to heart. Palms press in towards each other firmly. Knees and elbows press against each other firmly. Option to stay here for five smooth breaths. Or to find your arm balance, Bakasana or Kakasana, Crow or Kring Pose. Difference being one has straight arms, one has Chaturanga arms, bent elbows. Whatever you're doing, do it with compassion. Do what's reasonable. Letting this opening of the hips feel good. And we're gonna do that same motion that we did yesterday. So if you were here yesterday, it's gonna feel familiar. If you found yourself in an arm balance, meet us in Malasana. The feet are wide. We're gonna look over our left shoulder. We're gonna take our left hand and place it back behind our left hip. Then we're gonna swoop the right arm. We're gonna lift up, maybe come onto the toes, maybe the heels trend towards the floor, but try to lift up your pelvis, sort of like a wild thing. But our feet are wide. Come back, widen the knees, use your abductors. Bring the arms around, right hand back. Lift up, can you press through the heels this time? Keep the heels down, find a little more lift, squeeze through the glutes. As you lower the hips down, abduct, pull the knees apart from one another, chest comes forward. Left hand back, squeeze the glutes, push through the heels. Down, abduct, pull the thighs apart from one another. One more time on the right side. If you'd like, if it's accessible, you can find your wheel from here. But maybe not. Maybe you settle back down through your malasana. I fell out of it. There is a way to transition, not for me today. So we're back in our malasana. We're gonna let our hands come back down to the floor. We're gonna lift our hips up towards the sky. Sway from side to side. Either a rounded heavy spine or maybe hand to block with a flat back. Pushing the hips from right to left, allowing the body to twist how it would like. Let's be prepared to flow again. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Plant the hands, right foot back, chest reaches high, arms reach high. Hands to heart, press the palms in, twist towards the left. Reach the arms, revolve reverse. Now we're gonna go back towards that Saturn's twist, right hand plants down, left arm stacks, roll onto the side of the right foot, Bashi Stasana. 
option to stay maybe with a kickstand, maybe with feet stacked, maybe that star shape, tree pose, or you can grab peace fingers to big toe, extend, option is yours. From here, step the left foot behind the right, lift up wild thing. Another option to go into your wheel pose from here if that's something you'd like. I don't have the space on the side, so I won't. Moving back through side plank, regular plank, vinyasa option or down dog. Eyes forward and feet forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Plant the hands, left foot steps back. High crescent lunge. Hands to heart, twist towards the right. Stabilize through the feet, press down. Keep the arch lifted. Press through the back heel. Extend the arms, Saturn's twist. Revolve reverse. Moving slowly back through that Saturn's twist, planting the left hand down. Finding a revolve lunge here, rocking onto the left heel, beginning to push through the left hand enough to lift up that right leg. Again, finding whatever version you'd like to of your Vashisasana. Maybe that's like a tree pose, piece figure to big toe, hold, whatever it is, find it. And when you're ready, you can allow that foot to come back behind you. Find your wild thing. Moving through your side plank, regular plank, vinyasa option, or downward facing dog. Eyes forward, feet forward. Inhale, half lift, exhale, fold. Bend the knees, sink the hips, chair pose. If you're sweating, feel the sweat on your skin. Feel the effort. Fold forward. Inhale, half lift. Bend the knees, sink the hips, chair pose. Twisting towards the left. Option, just like we did before, to stay here twisting and then just rotate. So now the arms are stacked vertically. Or if you like, you can hook. We're gonna take weight off of the right foot and tuck that right heel towards the right glute. Begin straightening through that leg. And then set the foot down at the back of the mat. Extend the arms, maybe. Press up through the feet, or press down through the feet, come up through the arms. Again, revolve reverse. Saturn's twist. Right hand down, left hand up. Vashisasana. Side plank. And now the wild thing. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower our bum all the way to the floor. So bend your elbow that is supporting you so that you're seated. Find your boat pose towards the back of the mat. If you'd like to straighten your legs, straighten your legs. If you need to bring the toes down, bring the toes down. Cross at the ankles, pull the heels in, reach forward, feet back. Vinyasa. Left leg lifts. Step it all the way forward. Walk the hand so that you're in a wide leg fold. And then enjoy your wide leg fold. Just taking a fold here. Perhaps grabbing peace fingers to big toes, letting the elbows come out wide, letting the heart be heavy towards the floor as you find resistance, toe 
the fingers, long spine. Lean a little more weight towards the ball of the feet. Spread the toes. Rock the weight back towards the heel. Back and forth until you find an even weight distribution. And now begin to bend through the left knee. Keep the right leg straight. Maybe lift the chest halfway. Maybe lift the chest all the way. And now come to the other side. Planting the hands at the top of the mat. Right foot back. Option for a vinyasa or straight to down dog. Eyes forward, feet forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Sink the hips, Utkatasana, chair pose. Fold forward. Pedal out if you need to pedal out. Open through the chest if you need to open through the chest. Your practice. You're in charge. Release the hands back towards the floor. Inhale, half lift. Bend the knees, sink the hips. Chair pose. This time we twist towards the right, and then we stack the forearms vertically. Option to stay here, find a little bit of leverage, hooking the elbow towards the leg, keeping the hips low, weight in the right foot as we begin to tuck the left heel towards the left glute. Send the left leg back. Step it back. Extend the arms long. Press down through the feet, lift through the torso, revolve reverse. Saturn's twist, left hand down, right arm up. Bhakshisthasana, side plank. Whichever version that is for you. Wild thing, maybe wheel if you'd like. But remember, we're gonna bend through the left elbow we're going to sit all the way down. If you traveled off your mat, you could just find Navasana, boat pose. Option to extend the legs, keep the chest lifted. If you'd like, you can grab these fingers to big toes, push through the feet. If you feel shaking, embrace it. That means you're trying. Hold it longer than you want to, which is what, more than one second <laughs> for me anyways. Cross at the ankles, pull the heels in, arms forward, feet shoot back, chaturanga. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, lift the hips. This time, you're gonna lift your right leg up. You're gonna step it forward. Walk the feet around so you're in a wide leg fold. I'm going to turn just so that my backside isn't to you. In your wide leg fold, again, just enjoy it for a moment. If that would be inverting, go ahead and invert now. I would suggest a supported headstand before a tripod, unless you're very comfortable in your tripod. Remember, the key is to push as much as you can into the hands so that there's less weight in the head, and then hug the elbows in towards each other. Otherwise, maybe just going side to side, getting little mini skandasanas, or a twist. Right hand under the face, left arm up in the sky. You can even let that left hand, or I guess that's right hand, yeah, right hand reach around the low back. Maybe waving the left hand that's on the ground. And then switching sides. Right hand down, 
left hand lifts, gazing up at the hand. If that's too much for the neck, gaze down, maybe let that hand come around looking for the front right pocket. If you're still inverted, make plans to begin to land slowly, intentionally with control. And this time we're gonna bend into the right knee, straightening through the left leg. Finding a spandasana. Maybe the hands come to heart. Maybe you lift halfway. Maybe all the way deep into the skandasana. And then you're gonna come all the way up, push down through the feet, skandasana to the other side. You should be at the top of your mat right now. Frame your foot, step the foot back, move through a vinyasa, or straight to down dog. Eyes forward. Now, bring your feet together. Bring your hands wider. And then sink your hips back towards your heels. Look way beyond your mat. You're gonna bend your knees and count your feet as far forward as you can. Good, like a rocket. And then sit, <laughs> Navasana. Trick ya, boat pose. Holding here. Now, here's where the challenge comes. If you want to extend your legs, you can extend your legs. What we're gonna do, bring hands above instead of beside. Bring them above, palms together. So we're squeezing in, adduct or abduct, adduct. So apart, together. Apart, together. Now, apart, rights come over lefts. Apart, lefts over rights. We're working the brain now as well. Now can you do the opposite arm over the opposite leg? So right hand over left hand, left leg over right leg. And then opposites. This is really good for the brain. Also, it's a good distraction, right? While we're in bow pose, working our core, our hip flexors. One more time on each side. Find your high boat. Lower into your low boat. Now this is where we really work the core. Hands above for handstand. Squeeze the core, squeeze the glutes, reach through the toes, reach through the palms. Come all the way back up, high boat. Whew. Bring the feet down. Hands reach forward. Slowly roll the spine onto the floor. Arms overhead. Big breath in, let the rib cage expand open, flare apart, and soften down. Another big inhale, and exhale. Hands float down by the hips. Now, if you have a block and you'd like to do this, if you want some rest, you can use the porty bridge. So we're gonna press down to the feet. We're gonna lift our pelvis up into the air. If you, again, would like this to be more restorative, place a block under your sacrum, take some rest. Otherwise, tuck your shoulder blades beneath you, interlace your fingers, press down through the side edges of your hands, through your forearms, lift a little higher. Lift up the heels, lift up the right leg. And then tap the right toe down, bring it all the way up. If you need to lower that left heel down, you certainly can. Doing two more of these. Good. Resettle the hips. Left leg lifts. Tap. Three more. <clears throat> Good. Lower. Keep the hips high. And now roll the spine down. Hug the knees in. <clears throat> if it feels good, you can rock side to side. Let's rock and roll now, up and down on the spine, and come all the way back up to a seat. Soles of the feet together, knees apart, but a kanasana. Grab hands to ankles, lift through the chest. You can stay here or you can fold forward. <clears throat> if 
If you'd like to go into your Kurmasana, this is a good opportunity for you. I'm gonna cough into a microphone. <coughs> Excuse me. You can also place a block for the feet to allow a little more space for that Kurmasana. You'll make more of a diamond shape with your legs. You're gonna bring the chest forward with the straight spine and try and get your shoulders beneath the legs. And the arms will eventually be able to wrap back and under. And you keep pressing the chest down, forehead towards the floor. Not my best today, but that's the cool thing about yoga. Every day is a different practice. So I'm gonna stick with my Baddha Konasana today. And I'm gonna let that be enough. Having compassion for my own body, even as I teach. Coming back up, soles of the feet now are flat. Stretch the left leg long, cross the right leg over the left. Gentle twist towards the right. If you'd like to hook the left elbow, you certainly can. Ardha Matsya and Rasna, half Lord of the Fishes. Reflecting on the effort of the practice. Now, meeting that with ease in your practice. Find a counter twist, gentle. Let the sole of the right foot come inside the left leg, Janya Shirshasana, folding forward over the left leg. <clears throat> And now you can bring your left forearm on the inside, stacking the shoulders, pulling the right shoulder back, getting a side body stretch. <coughs> Coming back up. Right hand plants behind you. Sweep the left arm up and around for another modified well thing. Very gentle this time, let it feel good. Let's sit back down. The right leg stretches along. Bringing the left foot in and across the leg. Getting your twist here. not queuing as much because my allergies are acting up and I really just feel like coughing. So just take the cues from the first side. <laughs> Inhaling to lengthen, exhaling to twist. And now let's find that gentle counter twist. Back to center. Janusha Shasana. Sole of the left foot to be inside of the right leg. Lengthen the spine first. Nice flat back as we fold forward over the right leg. No attachment to where we can or cannot reach. If you are hypermobile and you can have a block here and be completely flat, don't let yourself be too proud of that. Instead, bend your knee. Lay your tailbone out behind you and pull your heart forward and then pull your heel back. Challenge your hamstring instead of stretching it. This is my really open side. So for me, sometimes I, my ego gets in the way and I feel so proud that I can really just get stretchy there, but what does that do for me in life? Nothing. Instead, I want strength. So I'm going to give myself some strength here. 
Now, my side body stretch, on the other hand, is a different story. So let's all find our side body stretch. Right forearm through the inside of the right leg. Bring the left shoulder back. And then begin to arch the left side of the body as you spiral the thoracic spine up towards the sky. So the sternum up towards the sky. Reach through the fingers. And then just kind of let the arm make a pretty little rainbow shape. But hopefully feeling something from hip all the way through the fingertips. You can use the right elbow as a little bit of leverage to help twist, but don't let the right shoulder come forward. Try and keep the collarbones completely broadened. And coming all the way up, left hand plants, modified wild thing. Maybe circling through the right arm. Setting the hips down. <sighs> Hands back behind you. Fingertips facing the toes. Windshield wiper the shins, the knees from side to side. Flatten the feet. Press into the hands. On your inhale, you're going to press into the feet and the hands. You're going to lift your pelvis, squeeze your glutes, reverse table. If you want added challenge here, remember, keep the collarbones broad. We're not jamming the shoulder joints. Squeeze the glutes. Maybe lift up one leg, just like we did in our bridge. Try and keep the hips still and quiet. Engage, engage the glutes, and then reach the other leg up. And then slowly lower down. Stretch the legs long. You know where we're going. Doing the same thing. Reverse plank. So when you're ready, broadening the chest, pushing into the heels, lifting the pelvis. Press down through the left heel, press down through the hands, lift the right leg, hip flexors, core. It's all working. Maybe you even do some taps here. I know I said the end of effort, but this is an option. You don't have to do these taps. And then sit down. Sit up nice and tall. Pilates roll back. Let's honor Mimi. <laughs> and reach the arms overhead. Get as long as you can here. Banana stretch. Feet to the right, hands to the right. You can cross your left foot over the right. You can grab the left wrist with the right hand. Recognize all of the effort, all of the compassion of your practice today. I'm pride there. Notice any blunders that you may have had, anything that you fell out of or that felt hard, come back to your center. Find your banana on the other side. Instead of focusing on those, allow yourself to smile. Allow your ego to get a little bit bigger. A lot of times we think about, you know, if we have a big ego, it means things are all about us. But our ego is our identity. So if everything's all about us, that means our ego is actually pretty small. So allow your ego to involve others, to involve other situations, other points of view. Allow compassion to be part of that. Sometimes that means laughing at yourself. For me, it was when I tried to transition back to Malasna from wheel, something I've done many times, but today it was hard. Sometimes days are hard, man. And that is okay. Come back to center. Bring the hands down by the sides. Tuck the shoulder blades underneath. Allow yourself to take up space on your mat in pentacle pose. Now this can be how you stay for your Shavasana or it can be where you do your body scan. Just kind of scan from head to toe, toes to head. And notice if there's anything else that the body's asking for. Now that may be a supine twist. Might be a Shoulder stand or plow pose, another back bend. Happy baby. 
If your body is asking for more, go ahead and do that. Greatest gift you can give your body is what it's asking for in moments like this. It's not asking for anything. If it's asking for rest, stay where you are. And again, engage with yourself, with your mind, with compassion and ease, with an intentional breath, not one that's full of effort, but one that you can feel nourishing the body and that you can be really grateful for. If you haven't already, allow your eyes to close. Allow your breath now to soften. Beginning to distance yourself from your physical body. Observing yourself, breathing, being. In your mind's eye, seeing the shape of your body on the floor. Softening the muscles of your face. And then observing as you soften those muscles. Allowing the muscles of the body to soften as the floor supports you. Giving yourself permission to find deep relaxation and restoration in your Shavasana. Breathing in, compassion for yourself, your mind, body, practice. Breathing out compassion for others. Again, for the weary world that we live in, for those who are hurting, for those who need love and compassion. Letting this be a living, breathing, meditation, mantra for the rest of your day. Anytime that you think about it, anytime that you notice your breath, sending out those intentions, those thoughts, recognizing that they can make a difference. I'd like to thank you for practicing with me today. I wish you nothing but peace and love. Om Shanti. Shanti, Shanti.